Hey everybody, welcome to the Mark Parham Podcast. Uh, you can find me on Spotify by just typing in Mark Parham Podcast and my name should pop up. I mean my podcast should pop up. You know, anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, there's a term that Joe Biden uses. He calls it uh, Bidenomics. I think that's what they call it, where, you know, he's you know, it describes, you know, the economy under Joe Biden and all this other stuff. And anybody that watches the news, picks up a book, reads a magazine, they can see that this, uh, that uh, the Bidenomics, as Joe Biden likes to call it, it's not working for people. I mean, if you go into a grocery store and you buy some groceries, the groceries are through the roof. People don't still don't have jobs. If you go in the inner city, again, people still don't have jobs. And... You know, nobody is, people don't like what's going on in the economy. I mean, people are stealing, people are doing all sorts of stuff nowadays. And uh, it's amazing that I look at shows like MSNBC and CNN and they'll sit up and, you know, act like, you know, this is some, you know, just amazing economy right now. I mean, even though, again, they put out certain numbers for, you know, Joe Biden to look good anytime, you know, Joe Biden is going through a scandal. They put out these, you know, uh, numbers with the economy that looks so great. And uh, people can see right through that. People can see that it's a bunch of propaganda. I mean, if you look at America right now, uh, you know, things are falling apart. I mean, you, you look at what's going on with the train tracks, with some of these train companies. You look at what's going on with the auto workers. If it's, you know, anybody can see that things aren't going according to plan, at least for, you know, somebody who's out there touting or somebody's mentioning, you know, a good economy and just all this stuff. And it, to me, it's just it's 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 I would say it's comical, but it's it's very sad because uh, you watch these television shows and it's almost like they think people are stupid. I mean, if, if the economy was so good with Joe Biden, then you would have all these voters who are saying that, you know, they can't afford to pay their bills. It just is as simple as that. And uh, if you look at Joe Biden, it's almost like this man doesn't know he's on planet Earth. I mean, he's I saw one report where it looked like he was tripping or tripping down the stairs, up the stairs, something like that. They came out and uh, he's lost. He even went to, I think, Detroit or something like that. He went to Michigan. I know he went to Michigan and he tried to st stand on the picket line and it looked like he didn't even know where he's at. And I, I think it's really sad. I think his age is starting to show. He's he's never been, I would say, the greatest leader because there's even things in his past where he's told lies and stuff like that. But he's just, he's looking just odd. If you look at his face when he's, you know, reading something, it's like he's squinting. It's like he needs a pair of glasses or something. So really sad how they keep on trying to push this man to voters and tell people that oh everything's okay and his health is okay and he's going to lead the country and all this other stuff and you know you can easily tell that something's going on with his mind because he's just he's it's it's just weird it almost reminds me of uh, Mitch McConnell Mitch McConnell did a speech and it went viral because again he's a Republican but Mitch McConnell was doing a speech and he was just, he was frozen. He said a few words and he was just frozen. He was looking all strange. And I think Biden is, he's to that point. I mean, you can tell the guy is, he's not all there. And they just keep on, you know, telling people everything's okay. And, you know, he's going to lead it, make America come back and all this other stuff when he doesn't even know what state he is, which state he's in. I mean, when he's probably doing campaign stops, People probably have to remind him 50 times to tell him, oh, we're in Colorado, oh, we're in Wisconsin. And uh, I think somebody who's that lost doesn't need to be leading the country. Uh, especially with our border crisis, with what's going on and, you know, with jobs, even uh, a lot of the stuff that is, uh, you know, some of the some of the stuff that's going on with schools and stuff. Some of the schools right now, I mean, America keeps on falling further and further behind. And then before they were trying to, you know, put it on COVID. Oh, well, COVID's the reason why kids aren't getting the education they're supposed to get. But now we have schools that are open right now and kids still aren't, you know, reading and doing math the way they should. And uh, at the one Baltimore school that I was reading about, or just some of the schools in Baltimore where kids can hardly read or do math. That's where we're at in the country. So 
I think Democrats want him to eventually put Kamala Harris in place. They might not admit it. They might, you know, might not want to go on TV and say this, but they know Joe Biden's getting old. I think he's in his 80s right now. And they're just using the, they want to use the election to, you know, put him in a place. And then if something, you know, if, if he, something's going on with his health or something like that, they can say, you know what, we've got a spot for Kamala Harris. Why don't we put her in? And then they'll use the whole, oh, well, this is the first black female, you know, to be a president in America. And this is such a great thing. And under Kamala, our country will be looking like probably a third world country. And so that would be horrible. I think Kamala would be a worse leader than Biden, as crazy as that sounds. But uh, right now they're just they're just trying to use Biden. It's 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 sad. It's it's very sad that you know they're so power hungry that it's just like well let's just keep this guy in a, in place because you know we can't we can't risk those those Republicans winning. We can't re resist Trump being back in office. So it's just like they're using all the tactics they can. They're coming up with. You know, all these different charges and indictments and it's, like I said, it's amazing. I've never seen something like this, you know, in, in, in my lifetime at least. Especially before, you know, you're supposed to go on stage to debate. And it's almost like they time the debate and then if the debate is coming out on Thursday, well, oh, let's indict Trump for something on Thursday. It's like they're they're timing all of these things perfectly. They're timing these things to... You know, sort of go hand in hand with the debates. So it'll give people something to talk about during the debates and, you know, discourage folks from voting for Trump. And Trump, Trump's message is getting stronger. He's making some very good points. And uh, who, who, who could vote for someone like Joe Biden? I mean, I know people might feel they're Democrats and not like Trump, but I mean, we're at a critical point in history right now. I mean, are we going to keep on, you know, putting this guy in leadership positions where you know, everything around him is falling apart. I mean, he's doing a horrible job. And any Democrat that comes on there and, and says he's not is telling a lie. If you look at, uh, even in his polls, his polls, I mean, his support with minority communities, the black community, Hispanic community is falling apart. And normally those are two groups where the Hispanic community, especially with blacks in America, normally that's just a solid voting base. They can't even rely on that anymore. And so... They're just pulling all sorts of stuff out of the hat. They're trying to get immigrants to come across the border to get them to vote Democrat. It's it's just like they're throwing a hail mary pass, like in football when you know the the you, the score is tied and you know you just need that last bit of just something to happen. They're just almost throwing the football down the field and hoping somebody catches it. So it's uh, I, I, if America keeps on going down this path, I mean it's going to be scary in 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 how 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 could how could somebody justify you know spending all this money look at look at look at the stuff that's going on with the Ukraine how Joe Biden will promise all the money to go to the Ukraine but you know you have folks in Hawaii who need housing who need you know some relief these are folks that are Americans. These are folks that are on, you know, American land and they can't even get any help. I mean, folks are on YouTube and online and TikTok and all these social media uh, websites, you know, trying to get help and trying to do fundraising and putting out videos and stuff. And you have a president that can just easily, oh, well, you know, Zelensky needs this. So let's send him 200 million here. Let's send him a billion here. Let's send, I mean, all the money we're sending to the Ukraine we could have probably built most of Hawaii up again. I mean, those folks are still, you know, begging for money. Uh, some reports have shown the people at hotels. And I think now some of the hotels don't even want the folks there because they wanted them to stay a certain period of time. And now the hotels are like, well, let's get them out before we get our tourists. So it, it's, I think we're, we're truly in like a, a twilight zone right now. The way the country's been run. I mean, I've we've had bad presidents before, but this is just like insane that he's so tone deaf, and and he'll show up at places, and Joe Biden will halfway be falling asleep. He's he's you know not making sense when he's talking about things, and I've just never seen something like this. Like, could you imagine if Trump was 
you know, this was going on with Trump where Trump was falling asleep and slurring words and, you know, having to get folks in his, his you know, people working the White House to you know, get try to hurry everybody up to get him off the stage because they don't want him to say something that, you know, again, I've, I've it's, it's truly strange. And, and could you imagine if this, if Donald Trump was actually having these problems? Oh, the media would be on it. But we live in a, a society where, especially in America, where the media companies, they protect uh, Joe Biden. They'll tell you, oh, everything's okay. And, you know, he's doing great. And he's such, in high spirits and all these other things. And, and you can look at the photos. You can see what's going on online. And you know it's not true. And uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible mess. I think they're, again, I might be wrong, but trying to set up everything. So all of us are saying you know, President Kamala Harris has won. That's what they're trying to do. They want Kamala Harris to win. I think they're they're looking for her to take over. She checks the boxes and is what it is. So, like I always say to everybody who listens to some of my podcasts, you know, if you see something going wrong or there's something that you don't like, make a video about it, speak out, go on Twitter, say something because at this pace, this America right now in, in 2023 is it's going down the tubes. And I don't know if we can take one more year of this guy, his administration, these policies. Like, it's it's reaching such a breaking point that even Democrats slowly are waking up. So, again, I know I'm rambling, but have a very good day. And then also, again, like I said, follow me uh, at Spotify. Just go type in Mark Parham Podcast, M A R K. P-A-R-H-A-M is in Mary, and then podcast, and I should pop up. Thank you.